Okay. Um, and as Gil said, I'm Teresa Slotik from Literacy Minnesota, and we're going to talk about North Star, look at the curriculum, um, and how you might use it to teach digital literacy. I know that um, all of you are, you know, experienced in your field and may add greatly to this conversation. So I do want to welcome you to, um, to bring in your own perspective and share it with the group. A lot of times I am on, I'm on webinars all the time. And many times people think, oh, everyone knows this already. And oftentimes that's not the case. So sharing your successes or um, barriers you've overcome in teaching digital literacy will be very welcome. Um, we, have, we have about 90 people on the call, so you can either chat it in or if you want to like unmute, that's fine with me as well. So let's get started. Um, we're going to not do all of this. We're going to, because of our time constraints, but I do want to start out with an example workflow of how sometimes programs use North Star and a little bit of background in case you are new to North Star um, and what it has. So North Star is a platform that provides assessments and curriculum and self-directed online learning around digital literacy. And North Star is meant to start at the very basics. Um, you know, from how to turn on a computer, how to use the internet, how to use email, how to use a mouse, up to some more advanced skills like um, kind of basic Word, PowerPoint, Excel, as well as some more like daily living kinds of things like using telehealth. We, along with the, the assessments and the two types of curriculum, we also have a learner management system and um, ro robust reporting so that you can see what your learners are doing um, as well as kind of at a macro level what's going on in your organization. I also wanna stop and say that if you have any questions as I'm talking, please uh, feel free to interrupt me either through the chat or through, um, through unmuting. I, you know, this is for you. So I'm happy to answer those questions as we go along. So North Star is great because it's very flexible and there are many different ways you can use it. Um, and that makes it difficult sometimes for programs to know how to use it or how to get started. So I thought we would start this just again, since I don't know where you're at in your North Star journey, just by giving you a sample way that many organizations use North Star, kind of a sample flow. And then we will you know, focus on the instructional led curriculum during the rest of our talk. So many organizations will start out, and I, I would say this is the best practice if it, if it works for your organization, by giving, one of the, by giving an assessment. And the reason that we wanna do this first is to see what uh, students already know so you can focus your instruction on what they have yet to learn. Um, so I would recommend giving the assessment unproctored at first, um, again, just to see where your class is at or the person you're working is at. And North Star, as you know, you can teach it. Um, you can teach it in person as a class. You can teach it remotely as a class. You can do it one-on-one -on -one tutoring with North Star and people can kind of do it on their own depending on your setup and the learner's um, needs uh, and preferences. So I'd give the assessment first. The thing about the North Star assessments is they are kind of scenario based for the most part. And they actually have people show that, that they know the skill. So it's not multiple choice, it's not true false. They're actually having to perform the skill in the assessment. Once they take the assessment, they'll get a results page that will tell them how they did. Does anyone in the group know what percentage score you need to have to pass a North Star assessment? Eighty-five. Someone said eighty-five. Yep, it's eighty-five percent to pass the assessment. Many of you are close, but it is eighty-five percent. And as you're looking at these results, on the left-hand side, the person taking the assessment will see in green the standards that have been passed. So all of North Star is built on standards, and the standards are really the skills that you need to be successful um, in each topic area. 
And I'll, I'll kind of show you the topics, but North Star has 15 topic areas now. And so therefore 15 assessments. Um, the gray column over on the right, these are the standards that the person does not yet know. Now, if someone takes this assessment, and let's say, um, let's say they didn't pass, but they were close, maybe 80%. And um, in their skills to improve, there were just a few standards here that they hadn't passed. They may want to go to the self-directed online learning or the practice lessons um, and just practice these specific skills. You know, they probably wouldn't want to do the whole module because they know most of it. So if that were the case, where it says, let's look at um, under a skills to improve, it says log into email standard four. They could click on that little barbell to the right where it says practice, and then they would go right to that part in the self-directed online learning. So it really is individualized to each person's learning needs and you know, time saving to what they need to focus on. If someone like in this case, uh, their score is very low, um, and I would say lower than 75%, would be applicable here, and you wanted them to work on the self-directed online learning lessons, they could go to underneath this copper colored bar, it says go to NSOL, NSOL stands for North Star Online Learning, and click on there and they would start at the beginning of the module. Uh, the modules take about 90 minutes to do, but they don't have to do it all at once. You can do five minutes one day, 10 minutes the next, and it will save your progress. Now, um, there are other options, of course. Well, let me kind of show you what that looks like because you can marry the, these practice lessons with um, classroom instruction as well. So this is an example of the self-directed online learning. And you can see on here, there'll be some instruction that's provided. So it's somehow teaching the learner something about digital literacy. But also in the self-directed online learning, you'll have um, this, you'll see this barbell where it says try it, where they're actually practicing the skill. And Northstar feels it's very important to actually, um, that you can't learn digital literacy through lecture alone. You really have to get in there and practice the skill. So that's included in the practice. And someone did ask a good question um, about, in order, to, in order to save the work to use the self-directed online learning, the, um, this is a really good point, Ralu, thank you. You would need to add the learner to the learner management, North Star learner management system, and they would have a username, which is an email address and a password in order to log in. Now, um, of course, many of the people that you're working with have low digital literacy skills, so they won't know how to use email and that is okay. You can create a, a fake email for them or an actual email for them. They don't have to be able to access it yet. They just need to know that, be able to type in that email address. And sometimes if, you, if they have a computer, if you have a computer at school um, that only they use, like if you're giving out computers, you can, um, you can save that password for them, um, if that's not applicable to your school. Sometimes there are little label makers that are about 20 bucks that make a little tiny label that um, many organizations, including Literacy Minnesota, will put the username and the password on the label and then people will stick it on the back of their phones underneath their phone case. North Star is not something that's very private. So as long as the you know password isn't something they're using in other situations, it's okay to have that um, written out. But thank you for bringing that up. Um, <clears throat> and then there was a question about which module covers password recovery. I will show you how to find out things like that um, when we get into the curriculum. And if I don't, Katrina, please remind me. All right. Um, <clears throat> so, the other options, of course, for instruction are to provide a class, which is what we're gonna focus on today. So here's an example of a class that's being held in Pennsylvania. And um, you're gonna, we're gonna use the North Star curriculum. And all of the North Star curriculum starts out with um, 
this, it, it all looks the same. So every lesson looks the same. So what I show you today is how the flow of a lesson would go for any topic that you choose to use in North Star. After the instruction, however it's given, you would then have someone retake the assessment to see their progress. I would recommend having it proctored at this point if you have that capacity. Um, and does anyone know what the difference between a proctored assessment is? What can I get if I pass an assessment and it's proctored that I can't get if it's not proctored? Anybody know that? I see some answers. A certificate, right. And a badge that would say that it's, that it's if it's unproctored, you can get a badge that says it's unproctored. If you get, if it's proctored, you get a different badge and a certificate. And Tamara, I agree with you, students love the certificates. So um, when, you, when you work with someone who's low digital literacy, computers are scary. They're afraid of breaking the computer. They're afraid of wiping out all the information. So having a certificate that this objective certificate that shows that they know what they're doing is really powerful. So I've had students who will start crying when they get their first certificate, give me high fives. People, and I'm sure you all have had this experience too. People will um, buy frames and hang them up in their apartments. Uh, so, so it's really meaningful to people. And I like, um, Susan said that they post their student certificates on the walls of the classroom. I think that is a great idea. Uh, and, and Greg, I agree, I've heard that in many correctional facilities, this is, um, very powerful in terms of even helping people continue on with other types of learning, just to see that they put the time and effort into to learning and you see results. Even if someone doesn't pass, you know, sometimes people say to me, well, people will get discouraged if they don't pass. And my experience is they'll see, let's say they start out at 20% and they do go through some instruction and they get 50%. They haven't passed, but they've made a significant improvement and that really helps people um, continue on. Uh, I love your examples of that you've been giving. So thank you all for sharing. Um, all right, so, so that's kind of a typical flow. You can do whatever works best for your organization, um, but just to get you started, this might, might help. And then here would be if someone earned a certificate this is what it would look like. So I want to just remind you of the different topic areas that North Star has uh, with instructor-led curriculum. And um, I know Gail put in the chat kind of the North Star homepage that if you have to find the assessments and if you have questions, um, you can look at the homepage if you're not currently using North Star. But we do have these three different areas. And they're really broken out into three areas, more, more for you looking at them and me talking about them. Um, you don't have to give all 15 assessments to any one person. No one person has to take all 15 um, and, or go through all 15 classes. Really, you're going to decide what makes most sense for the goals of the learner and for the goals of the program. So if you just want to focus on Microsoft Excel, you can just focus on Microsoft Excel. If you, you know, many programs decide that they want to combine, like let's say these first three, basic computer, internet basics, and using email, maybe they want to combine those in a way. And the, the curriculum is really nice because you can pick and choose. Um, the lessons are standalone. So it is really easy to use what you need and your, your learners need uh, and, and not use the rest. Um, so the one assessment that we have completed that we don't yet have the curriculum for is telehealth. So how to access telehealth appointments. And the team is currently working on that and that should be done around November. Um, and our, our goal is always to have, once we add a new assessment to have instructor-led curricula that goes along with it. Um, I did see in the chat that um, Randy was saying that when they do mock interviews, they have the, the um, students have the certificate in their portfolio and talk about it in the interview. And thank you for mentioning that because that is really helpful, not only to have it, you know, the certificate, but also to help your uh, learners 
talk about it in an interview because you know some businesses know about it, some don't. So it's good for them to be able to talk about it. Um, if you wanna get started as a teacher and create a class, so uh, North Star is available to all ABE programs in Minnesota through their consortium, or your program may already have North Star, many do. If your program has, um, if your program has North Star, then you'll have a, I'm answering this question about how do I get started from Elizabeth. If, if you have, if your program has North Star, there will be a North Star administrator at your program, like one of your staff members, and they can add you as a teacher. And, and then you can um, use the curriculum and I'll show you how you can access the curriculum. If for some reason you don't know who your administrator is or don't know if your program has North Star, you can, that link that Gail chatted out, you can go there and there's an ask a question part so you can ask a question of North Star and we can figure that out for you. Um, there, there is about filling online job application. Uh, there's something about filling applications online in the internet basics curriculum, as well as um, in the career curriculum. We, I, we don't have a, I don't think we're gonna do a specific, at this point, we don't have plans to do a specific module only on filling out a, a job application. And so, um, yeah, so let me, as we are, you're asking about specific lessons, let's go look at the lessons. And I think um, in the concerns of time, I won't answer each specific question about the lessons, but I'll show you how to find out the answer. So any other questions just about the topics? Um, yeah, that's interesting. That's a great question, Kurt. I will bring that to my team. We're actually meeting um, this afternoon. And um, again, it's, uh, it's something that we want to, to promote. Um, and we have to just, you know, determine how we're gonna use our time and resources to finish things. But I would love to talk with you further, the team would. And um, so at the end, it will show my email. So if you wouldn't mind emailing me um, and we can maybe talk about it further. Thanks for bringing that up. All right. So to remind you, all of North Star is written at about a grade four um, reading level, which would be you know, CASAS 211 or TABE 501. Uh, that doesn't mean you can't use it with lower English language learners. You definitely can and many programs do. So um, it would just requires you as instructors to go more slowly, to maybe fill in some vocabulary around just digital literacy vocabulary. And I have heard from learners that they honestly really appreciate going slow. So they would rather go over something and really learn it rather than try and rush a bunch of things, you know, a bunch of skills. And the best quote I heard was a learner who said, um, she was talking about her program and she said, we, well, we don't learn a lot in any lesson, but what we learn sticks like concrete. And so I think, you know, just remember it's better to have people feel comfortable and to get them feeling comfortable with digital literacy and the skills rather than uh, a covering a breadth of knowledge. So let's look at a curriculum example. And um, I, I'm going to show you this. So typically when you're teaching a lesson, you're gonna wanna you know, print out the teacher guide or have it on a computer so you can see it. Um, and the reason for that is because North Star really gives you the actual words to say as you're teaching and then tells you when to show a certain um, you know, projections or handouts. So it's help, helpful to have with you. And I have mine next to me on the desk here. Um, and so the where, where you can find this is in your North Star admin portal, um, which we'll get, get to in a second. Uh, if you look at the blue navigation bar on the top, we're on the landing page, which is what you see under the North Star logo and, and the word demo, in my case, that's my, my organization. If we go all the way over to the right 
to the resources tab, uh, I should say the middle right, and click on that. In the right-hand column in the middle, it says North Star Curriculum. So this is where you're gonna find all the curriculum resources in North Star. And if we click on that, it starts out with this teacher guide, which just walks, so as I mentioned, all the lessons in North Star are arranged in the same way. They have the same components. And the teacher guide can walk you through those different components, um, whether or not you are an experienced teacher or starting out, you might wanna you know, just take a look at that to see what the components are and how best to use them in your instruction. But we'll go through some of those today too, as well. Um, then here are all the curriculum units. And let's say we'll go into using email. They all start out, and this is where some of you had questions about um, what is where. They all start out with this scope and sequence. So if you click on that, it will show you in this third column over the North Star Digital Literacy Standards that are in this particular topic area. And um, there's about, there's usually, I don't know, about 15 in each one. And then um, you, so let's say you really, you really want to just focus a mini lesson on logging into email. And you can see that that is standard four here. Now, if I go over to the lesson outline and standards addressed column, which is the farthest column to the right, and look down you know, the left-hand side of that column, I can see that standard four log into email is taught in lesson one. So then if I open up lesson one, I'm gonna find the information there. Now, if you are wondering what, as some of you have asked, what, um, what standard or skill, what lesson it's in or what topic it's in, you can find all the standards together back in your <clears throat> admin portal under resources still. But if you go to other resources here at the bottom in the middle, um, and the second rectangle is updated standards. And here you will have all of them listed one after another. So then you can find whatever skill you're looking for where it might, where it might be. All right, so let's go, um, let's go to, back to our, our um, what am I trying to say, scope and sequence. And I see um, Paulina was asking, are there plans to create lessons for pre-literate English learners? Um, yes, so interestingly enough, we are at the very beginning stages of talking with a, um, a group who has funding to kind of do that, looking at people who don't even, let's say their home, their home language was one that was not um, the keyboard, you know, the, the letters that we use in English. So even orienting to a keyboard with English letters can be very difficult. Um, so we're looking at that. I, I would say that's a ways out. Um, as you may know, our focus right now is on um, translating all of North Star into Spanish, which we have translated the basic computer assessment and the basic computer self-directed online learning that's available in Spanish now. We hope to do all of it um, by the end of the year, all of North Star by the end of the year, all the assessments and all the self-directed online learning. And then um, we also are focusing on completing all the self-directed online learning modules by, the end, by early 2023. So um, here you have the scope and sequence. And then uh, if you're interested in how this aligns to the college and career readiness standards, there's an alignment map. There's also one that aligns, uh, shows alignment to the ACES TIF. And then we get into the lessons themselves. Finally, there's a unit project for every, every um, topic that will show you, um, that will align directly with the college and career readiness standards. So it takes some reading material and really goes through it in an academic fashion. And then the skills that have been learned in this unit and ultimately people create a project using both of those things. So I now want to kind of show you what um, 
some of the curriculum and how you might use it. I know there's a few questions that I will get to in a second. Um, so the teacher guide, they all look like this. This is the top, I broke it into top and bottom just so you could see it better. And in the left, on the left-hand side, these are the standards that are in this lesson plan, this lesson. And on the right-hand side, these are the vocabulary words that will specifically be addressed in this lesson. Then under technology concepts, this is showing you kind of written in instructor language, what the objectives of the lesson are, and then any teaching tips you need to know. So for example, in this specific lesson, you um, are going to have to show examples of spam and phishing emails. And so you wanna either pull that from your own email or you can go online and look for email examples, but you wanna have that ready. Uh, and then it's also saying to you that sometimes in different email systems, it's called spam and sometimes it's called junk. So just so you know that as you're working on, on teaching this. Then the bottom of the instructor's guide really is just how to prep. So it's telling you what you need, what you're gonna be projecting, um, what handouts you're gonna have. If you're teaching remotely, you can click on these links and we'll bring up those handouts right on your screen. So let's kind of go into this lesson a little bit and take a look at um, what you would see as learner or what we would go over if you were learners. So I'm going to kind of pretend that all of you are, um, let's say intermediate English language learners. And we're gonna do some, some practice with this. So the first thing that the lessons start out with are the vocabulary. And we're gonna cover, we're actually gonna cover the fishing one too. Um, so what I have found with learners is that, uh, you know, it's very helpful to write the vocabulary on the board or project it. And then with digital literacy, I found that learners really like to go back and um, look at their notes. So I encourage them and you to provide notebooks or paper and some kind of writing utensil. So, and then, you know, a folder or something so they can go back and look at their notes as they go through the lessons. And so I would have them write down the words first and then go over them as, you know, many of you are much more experienced teachers than I am. Um, and so you probably have some tips and tricks that you can share with the group. Um, but you do want to make sure that you have people practice saying this out loud, even if they're not English language learners, but if they're lower literacy learners, it's helpful, um, you know, to hear the word as you see it. Um, and so I'm going to, what I would normally do is have, we have a big group, so I won't have you all on mute, but I would go over the words. So the first word is actually going to be this one that starts with a P and I would say this word is fishing. And then I'd have you repeat after me. The second word is a longer word. And as you may know, it often helps people who are learning, learning a new language to, um, to clap out the syllables. So in this case, I would say the second word is reputable, reputable. And then I'd have the students clap out the syllables with me as they said it. Um, the third word is spam, and then I'd have them repeat. You can repeat this to yourselves if you're, as you're practicing. Um, and then uh, I would, the next word is suspicious, suspicious. Um, and then the last word is virus. And I would be uh, curious for those who, um, and, you know, we we're talking about the, the, those who speak ASL um, kind of, later, at some later point, um, how you would recommend doing that for, for learners who are using that language. So that would be very interesting to me. Um, so um, then after we did that, I would go, we would, we start with the objectives or we go to the warm up. And the reason for the warm up is that there, there is evidence, you know, based research that shows that um, by starting out with what someone knows and getting them talking about it, kind of activating that prior knowledge, then uh, it's much easier for them to make a connection to the new information. So we want to um, 
see, you know, get people talking, just, you know, get them engaged, but also see as instructors what they already know and where they're coming from. So now I am, I think, um, and I will answer the question about the distance learning uh, in a second, um, how to track that. But I think for our purposes, it will work if you chat the answers in the, you know, in the chat. Um, but my first, my first, what we're going to imagine is that we are in a world with no computers. So prior to computers, when I ask these questions. So in that world without computers, how can you keep information like your credit card numbers or your social security numbers safe from those who should not have uh, that information? What are some ways that you can do that in a non-computer world? So Becky says, keep them in a place no one else knows about, right? Um, don't write your any passwords anywhere, hide it in your mattress, tear up your receipts, memorize, that's a good one. Lock them in a safe. So these are all great ideas of, you know, keeping that information private and safe. Um, you kind of got up to, got to this, but what if I had to write that number down? Oh, so Jeremy, you're, you're um, we're like thinking alike. If it's written down, and let's say I don't need that piece of paper anymore, what should I do with that? piece of paper. I can shred it. What if I don't have a shredder? Burn it. Uh, eat, eat it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Flush it in the toilet. I guess you'd probably want to tear it up first. Um, tear it up into a little shred. Cut it up, right? Um, so these are, these are great um, options. And um, how about if someone I don't know asks, who I don't know who has no reason to have this um, number, should I give it to them? No, right. Okay. So how about my second question then? How, let's say I moved to a new town and I need to do some shopping. How do I decide if a business is reputable, which would mean a good that I can trust it? What are some ways in a non-computer world I could decide if a business is, is reputable or safe. I could ask my new neighbors. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts? Check with like the Better Business Bureau. Mm -hmm. um, if I, if I had, you know, if it was a, Oh, that's good when the manager or owner's name should be displayed. If it was an, a company that I had used where I lived before, so let's say it was a, like Best Buy and I was aware of it, that might be okay to start there. I mean, it probably would be okay to start there. Um, right, a national chain versus independent. I could ask at the library. Um, I could ask at my school. Um, so these are some ways that I can find out if business is, is reputable or not as I'm in a new place. So now I'm talking to you as instructors. The reason I put those parameters on this about um, keeping it in a non-computer world is because many of the people you're teaching digital literacy to, that is the world they live in. They don't use computers. So um, when I'm talking to them, I wouldn't put those constraints on it, but just so you know, those might be the answers you get. And that's really valuable information because then you can see where people are at in terms of using digital literacy um, for this kind, these kind of transactions. It's also really helpful for you as instructors where you can go uh, to, to the, um, back to what was being talked about as you're introducing the new topic. So for example, if someone said, um, it's something that I should keep private and not share with people, then when you're talking about it, online, you can say that's the same online. So making those connections. So um, the next piece that comes in the North Star curriculum is the objectives. And uh, adult learners really like to know what they're gonna learn and how it's relevant to them. And so we wanna make sure that we cover these objectives. And again, many of you know this. 
Um, so I would have them print this, you know, write this out. And then if they are trying to learn English, um, practicing saying these out loud. Now, one thing that you may now know um, that is shown in kind of uh, to be in adult, in adult learning research to be um, valuable is when you're learning a new language, whatever language it might be, it's often hard to, to know which words are the most significant. So in helping people to not only pronounce language, but also to comprehend it, it's helpful to um, slow down how you're gonna talk about something, uh, say a sentence, for example, and make the, the normal stops or, or I don't, I can't think of the word, but like slow downs pronounced. So for example, I would read, let's just go with the second one, just in the interest of time. I would have people write all these down. And then if they were learning the, the spoken English, I would say, I'd have them repeat after me and I would break it down into chunks. So then that way, uh, someone who is hearing this can, or maybe seeing it signed, can see um, what words I'm focusing on, what words are more prominent. And those words are usually the, you know, the nouns and the verbs rather than more the filler words. So um, let's look at the second one. I would have you repeat after me and say that today we're going to learn to identify signs, and I'd have you repeat that, of emails that may have viruses. And so we kind of break it into those chunks and that helps with reading comprehension as well. So um, next, as we're in the lesson, I would say to you as learners, when you have an email account, you may get a lot of emails from advertisers. Just like in your regular mail, you get advertisements, you would also get advertisements over email. And these advertisements in email are called spam. And that was our, our um, fourth word here, S-P-A-M, spam. Many of these resource, um, emails, these spam emails, come from sources that are not reliable and, re and or reputable, I should say. And reputable means the email is from a person or a business that you can trust. So it's very important for you to recognize spam because um, spam emails can sometimes have viruses. We've all heard of you know, COVID, which is the coronavirus that makes people sick. Well, there are viruses that make computers kind of sick too, so they don't work right. And a virus is a, is a kind of software that, that hurts your computer. So some spam emails will try and give your computer a virus, or they might try to steal your money um, from you. So we want to know how to recognize potential spam emails. Um, and so uh, in the North Star curriculum, then I would show oops, this next slide and we kind of go over some common clues to help you identify spam. So the thing that, you know, I know we're getting close to the end of our time and I do want to answer your questions in the chat, but what I really want to focus on here is, um, you know, this here then I would go over these and I would have people either come up on the board and I'd go over the common clues at the top. And then if I was projecting this on the board, I'd have people come and like point to where do you see people trying to sell things like medicine? We'd go over what are some other words for medicine like pill or prescription, um, you know, we'd go through all of these. And if you're doing this remotely, it's really fun to let people annotate and have them you know, draw all over your screen. Um, but what I really wanna show you is that everything I just said to you is written down in the lesson plan. So let's just kinda take a look at the lesson plan. So what I'm looking at as an instructor is, This is what I'm seeing. So, you know, I'm, I'm seeing the vocabulary. Oh, well, I, you saw that first page. I'm seeing the warm up questions. It gives me some 
um, instructions on how to do the warm up. I'm seeing the, we will learn the objectives. It gives me a little bit of instructions there. And then the model and explain part, it exactly what I said to you, it tells me here what to say. So this helps maintain consistency across your classes. It helps, you know, a lot of us know how to do things, but we may not know the terminology. And more importantly, um, it's probably been a really long time since most of you did not know how to turn on a computer. And so sometimes when we're talking to people who are, who are at that stage of their learning, we forget um, what they don't know. And we might say things that to them don't make sense. So if I'm teaching someone to search on the internet and I tell them to click on a link, it doesn't mean anything to them, right? If they don't know that information, but it's something I do every day. So this helps us say things in a way that are maybe easier to understand from someone who hasn't learned those skills yet. Um, so the, the, yeah, the scripts are really great. You can also incorporate um, digital literacy into your ELL or ABE classes. It's just another subject. So think about, you know, like instructors will sometimes be teaching vocabulary around clothing, let's say, that, but they'll also teach people how to use email and then they'll have them write a sentence and email it to the teacher. So you can incorporate this into whatever topics you tend to be teaching, um, or you can have standalone classes. The, um, the question in the chat about, um, there was a question about how do I track my learner's time um, if they're using the self-directed online learning. It is really easy uh, to do. So if we are just quickly, back in our admin portal. And when someone, when a learner uses the self-directed online learning, when they log in, it will ask them, there won't be this first question that's, that pertains to me, but the second question where it says, right now, are you physically at the testing location? If they are with you in a class and you're already recording that time, they would click on the yes. If they're at home or at the library, at work or wherever they are, they would click on no and then click save. And what that does then is in the reporting in North Star, that's how we separate out the time they've spent doing the self-directed online learning with you and the self-directed online learning on their own. And the place that you can find that information, um, actually, let me get back here to my admin portal if I can. Sorry, this is a little bit of a runaround to get there, but from where I was. But um, if you go into the learner tab, it defaults to this view learners sub tab right under the blue bar. If you go to the view usage amounts, um, here it's going to show you usage at your location and usage away from your location. And then you'll see that it's in hours and minutes. You can download this as a spreadsheet so you can you know, manipulate it as, as you want. And you can also in the middle on all reports in North Star, there's this filter results. So you can filter in this case by date range or any tags that you've put on there. Um, so um, I know we are at the end of our session. I'm happy to, well, I wanna thank you all for coming. There's so much in North Star and many of you are at different points. It's, it's you know, I can talk for, about North Star for hours, um, but we do have a monthly free webinar for those of you who are subscribers that um, goes kind of over the, the tasks in North Star. Um, we also do in the resources section have a lot of, I mean, we're in educate, you know, literacy Minnesota is around education. So we do have a lot of um, resources for you to learn how to use North Star. You can always go to this link that was just put in um, and ask us questions, uh, ask our support team questions. And I'm happy to answer any last minute questions that you might have if, if any of you wanna stay on. I think Gail is gonna stop the recording at this point, um, but I have a